So expanding on the texture bombing idea, I made a small texture synthesis uh, by jittering texture coordinates. Um, let's uh, take a look at the texture bombing again. You can see there's a random um, distribution of small images um, on this cube face. Um, I can actually increase the amount of uh, cells um, as I go and I can also change the random distribution of uh, the different small sprites on it. And this is based on the idea to um, to split a surface into cells. So if I make this a little bit smaller here and I show the U UV coordinates, you can see that the surface is actually um, uh, partitioned into small boxes. Um, and when I use this random scale here, then I change the random position of uh, this image inside of the cell. Um, actually, this means that if the texture coordinates of a single image get greater than uh, 1.0, then it moves outside of the cell. So therefore, I have to also mix one cell with the contents of the surrounding cell. This is what this overlap uh, checkbox does. So you can see uh, if I remove overlap, then I only see the sprites inside of a, a cell and everything that is moved out of the cell uh, vanishes. So if I take a better position for random, yeah, actually they move quite, quite a bit outside of the cell. So let's activate overlap again. And you can see all the sprites that are here. Um, and expanding on this idea, having cells uh, where parts of textures uh, reside, um, I try to make some kind of texture synthesis. So let's take a look at that. S switch the actual shader. Now you can see the, fam uh, the famous crate. Um, if I show the UV coordinates again, you can see it's the same, it's a lot of boxes. If I increase the amount of boxes, uh, the yeah, uh, you can see the distribution. So let's go back to 3 here. But I um, did some other stuff inside here. So uh, let's go back to the texture. I made some parameters to um, manipulate uh, the position of uh, the crate inside of a box. So for example, if I change this offset here, you can see it moves out of its initial position and this is actually random. So if I shift it through to the random field of the noise function, it just goes to somewhere else and here you can see the amount of uh, how far it is shifted. One other thing I also included is I have a scale parameter where I can just scale the actual images inside of the boxes, the cells, and I can keep the aspect ratio if I want to. I can shift the position in the random field so that they change how they scale. And um, the most important part is the jittering of the cell borders. So if I go back to the UV coordinates, you can see it's a regular grid, but this is not what I want to have if I want to synthesize a texture. I want to have some kind of um, jittering at the edges. So let's go to the amplitude of the noise function for the jittering of the edges and I remove the straight um, checkbox, which actually um, 
um, activate the calculation of the noise function uh, for the cell borders. I can do it in both uh, dimensions. So, and I can actually change um, the amount of the jittering of the border. It's a low frequency, a mid frequency, and a high frequency jittering. I can actually adjust the frequencies here. So, you can see this moves if I move the slider. Okay. So, what can I do with uh, this kind of parameters? Let's make this a little less severe. If I set the scale to zero and I th set the offset to zero and uh, then I show the texture, you can see nothing happens. This is because this is only the border of the cell and there's a repeat uh, function for the actual um, images inside of a box. So even if the cell expands in this direction, uh, also the texture coordinates expand and it will wrap around because of the repeat function and start from the beginning. So I don't see any difference. So why did I do it? Yeah, the difference starts if I move the contents of the cells, like if I change the offset, for example, you can see these uh, contents of the cell move, but they move inside of the jittered patch. The same is with the scaling. And yeah, actually, you can see the effect. Um, this doesn't seem particularly useful for uh, this kind of texture but it is useful for some kind of natural materials like uh, rocks and grass or something. So let's take a, a rock from here and you can see actually you can't see any repeated borders. So this is a bit pixel crushed or whatever I want to call it. So I will activate MIP mapping here. So it actually looks quite smoother. So if I change some of the parameters now, you can see it just, um, it just changes the appearance of the overall surface and you don't see any repeated pattern anymore. If I move it, you can see it, and if I leave it at uh, a place like this, you can see the artifacts of the border here. But uh, therefore, I have uh, shaders, uh, I have sliders, so I can just select a good position for that. And actually, the next iteration, I probably want to also do some kind of alpha blending of the different patches. So, but I think uh, this is actually quite good. Uh, like it looks now, uh, this looks a bit arc repetitive. So let's change some random parameters here and there, and probably a little bit of the border. Okay, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's not so bad. So let's see what I can do with this kind of stuff. I also want to have some um, random rotation of the patches. Um, yeah, and as I said, alpha blending, so I get rid of the spoilers here. You can see it if I move around the cube. That's it. Thanks for watching.